everyone. Welcome to Extern Snowflake and FactSets webinar. Um, during the webinar, we will discuss how you can unlock value from unstructured financial data in Snowflake with no code artificial intelligence. Our presenters today are Matt Glickman, who is currently the VP of Customer Product Strategy at Snowflake. Before joining Snowflake, Matt spent over 20 years leading the development of business critical analytics at Goldman Sachs. We also have Rico Fabello, who is the VP and Director of Content Strategy at FactSet. Rico has extensive experience in driving the growth of FactSet's off-platform proprietary content offerings, and he also managed FactSet's premium and benchmark data feed businesses. Lastly, we have Riaz Nakuda, who is the VP of Strategic Partnerships at Exern. Riaz was previously at IBM Watson, SMP Portfolio Risk Solutions, and Algorithmics, and he has over 15 years of experience in capital markets, AI, and fintech. During the webinar, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box, and we'll be sure to have them answered at the end during our Q&A session, or we'll get back to you with the answers. Thanks, and with that being said, I will um, pass it over to Riaz. Thank you, Grace, and uh, welcome everyone to the webinar. Um, thank you for joining us. So um, as an agenda for, for today, we're, we'll give a bit of background. I'll give a bit of background on Axern. We'll then uh, jump into a use case to, to demonstrate how you can, act, how you can use uh, Snowflake and with facts and data sitting on Snowflake to then extract insights using the Axon platform and deliver those results back into Snowflake for analysis. And then we have, uh, we'll have a fireside chat uh, where I'll be uh, chatting with Matt about uh, how unstructured data is being used in Snowflake and some of the uses that uh, he's seen as well within the financial services space. And then we'll open it up to uh, Q&A. So let's jump into it. So with a bit of background in terms of Axon, for the, those of you who aren't familiar with, with us, we're a no-code AI platform. We're vertically focused on the financial services space. And we really allow data teams at, uh, at these organizations to really to create AI models and extract insights for better investment and risk decisioning. Uh, we're, we have about 50 clients uh, plus across the asset management, banking and insurance space. Um, we've raised uh, 19 million in funding. Um, and we, you know, the real value is to allow our customers to build these AI solutions at scale very quickly. So the, the challenge that we've seen our customers facing um, is that there's a gap between the, them being able to deploy AI solutions and uh, to support the business requirements. And it comes down to really three main aspects. One is there's case overload. So there's just too many requests coming in uh, for the, the data science teams to support that. There's also a, sh a shortage of talent of data scientists uh, you know, that, uh, that contribute to this, this um, this big gap. And then there's also budget constraints. It, it does it can take uh, often these types of projects can take, uh, you know, how, how you need to allocate a lot of budget to that. Um, so this is where action comes into play to, to help um, solve some of these issues. So one is with our no code platform, it requires less, you know, data engineering in terms of bringing in content, making it available and use for use within AI processes. Um, the, the workflow itself allows for not only data scientists, but also uh, business users to be able to build out these AI models. As I said, we're vertically focused. So a lot of the models that we have are, are really already built and trained to understand financial services taxonomies. And, and, and so that accelerates the training process. And we are enterprise ready, so we can be deployed at an enterprise uh, and you can be assured of security as well around that. So some of the key features and aspects of the Axon platform is around smart extraction. And so this is around extracting information from unstructured text, classifying it and 
being able to analyze that. Uh, predictions, so looking at building out machine learning models that can provide some forward-looking predictions or outcomes. And then detection, so looking at you know, various types of data sets, uh, identifying anomalies or, or patterns that, uh, that you may care about as part of that uh, investment and risk process. So as you can imagine, you know, with a platform like Axum, there's a number of different use cases that can be deployed. Some of them uh, we've listed here uh, around uh, for asset management, uh, you know, understanding ESG, credit risks uh, on the private market surveillance, uh, insure, and, and in the banking space, you know, looking at credit scoring, adverse media screening across AML. So a number of different use cases and really, really the types of use cases are just are only limited by, by the imagination. So one of the key aspects of our, of, of Axon is we have a, an integration centric architecture, which means that we allow our customers to ingest data from multiple different uh, partners of ours. Um, so if you're a Snowflake user, you can bring in your content from Snowflake into Axon directly. You can build out these AI models and deliver those results and insights back into your Snowflake, which can then be used um, for other downstream business applications. So, you know, for risk, for due diligence, for research, for building alpha trading alpha models, our investment signals. So a number of different applications. And so this takes us to our first sort of poll question. And what we'd like to understand is, you know, what type of technology do you use? Are you currently Snowflake customers? Are you FactSet customers? Are you both? Or are you, you know, you're, you're neither. So I'm gonna launch a poll and if, if, you, if you can, can you please, please respond? And the poll should launch now. And I see results coming in, great. I'll give it about 10 more seconds. All right, fantastic. Thanks, thank you for answering. So just uh, just to share with you some of the results, 12% um, you know, of, of the, the audience are Snowflake users, 12% as well are FactSet, 24% are, are both Snowflake and FactSet users, and, uh, and about half the, half the audience are neither. So that, that's great, so thank you for, for sharing that. And on the back of that poll, um, we want, I'd li we'd like to understand whether you're exploring AI and whether that's part of your, your process. So I'm gonna launch the poll here and uh, please, please respond. Okay. Great. So we'll, we'll end the poll here. So, you know, of the, of the participants who uh, we have about 33% who are currently using AI uh, in their unstructured data process. They're about half the audience members are looking to start using AI and 16% aren't. So that's great. So thank you for that. And um, it's good to see that there is an intersection here between uh, you know, Snowflake fact set and, and action from, from our, from the members on the, uh, attending. So, so let's, let's jump in now to the, uh, to the use case. So what we're, what we're going to show in, in this use case is how can we take fact set transcript data, um, on Snowflake process that through the action platform to derive some insights. So the scenario here is imagine I'm an analyst and I've been asked to identify investment opportunities uh, that in companies that are positively impacting the environment. So having a, a positive impact in the environment and are launching new products. So the hypothesis here is that, you know, there are companies which are going carbon neutral and they're launching new products that you know, may have a higher investment return 
uh, for the for as as an investment. So I've been asked to identify these signals and the within you know corporate presentations, earnings calls, and investor meetings. And my PMs asked me, you know, I need this information before lunch. Um, so as an analyst, you know, there's no way I can go through all this content um, and, and do this now. So how, how am I going to do this? So there's three questions I, I ask myself as an analyst. Where can I get access to high quality uh, events and transcript data uh, to, to you know, do this analysis? How can I quickly go through that content to extract information around uh, ESG in this, in this case, more specifically around the environment and information around product launches. And I, I need to obviously do this at scale because you know there's a there's a number of companies that I, I number of companies that I'm following and number of documents that I, I may need to go through. And then finally, I need to quickly be able to communicate these results and views back to my PM. And I need to do this in a really in a secure environment. So that's, those are the questions and, and the challenges that I have to, as I, as I go through this process. And so thankfully, you know, my, my organization um, is, uh, it, is, a, is a fact set, uh, it subscribes to fact set and fact set and fact set transcripts or events data is available on my, on the Snowflake data marketplace. So this is where I can quickly make I can quickly make the this data available within my Snowflake share. So I'm going to turn it over to to Rico to talk a little bit around the quality of the facts of data and the coverage, as that that is definitely important in terms of my my use in my my analysis uh, to, to determine you know which companies are positively impacting the environment as well as launching new new products around that. So that I'll turn it over to Rico to uh, to share with you a little bit more around the fact set data. Thanks, Riaz, and hi everybody. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with fact set, I just want to spend a minute talking about who we are. Uh, fact set's a global financial data and software provider with over ten thousand employees in over forty countries and just about one hundred fifty thousand global users. And uh, of that ten thousand employees, half of our workforce is dedicated to content collection and integration. And that data is what underpins one of our key value propositions, which is to provide our clients access to a wide breadth of connected content. Our content and technology solutions group, or CTS for short, builds off-platform solutions like data feeds and APIs for our clients to use either in their own environments or accessing that data via platforms like Snowflake. Our own content sets range from company data like financial metrics and supply chain relationships to macro market data like economics to data on people, data on mergers and acquisitions, company events, and beyond. Through the Open Facts at Marketplace, we also partner with dozens of third party providers, and all of this data is tied together via Facts Sets Entity and Security Master. And really, what this approach means is that we can seamlessly connect data across all sources. We can react and develop nimbly to ensure that our clients have access to the data that they need to power their businesses. And it lends us decades of experience in data integration and delivery. and also allows us to deliver that content directly where our clients are doing their work, whether that's through file-based data feeds, RESTful APIs, or on FactSet or third-party hosted cloud platforms like Snowflake. So now I wanna talk a little bit about the XML Transcripts product itself. Uh, the XML Transcripts product provides access to the details and transcriptions of millions of company events like earnings calls, presentations, investor meetings, and more. The raw written transcripts are semi-structured in nature. They're a challenge to work with, they're a challenge to organize, they're a challenge to connect with other valuable content and insights. And because of the value of the information within this data, plus the difficulty of extracting that value, the opportunity to benefit from the content is significant. Uh, so our transcripts product is in an easy to use, uh, easy to connect standardized XML format and it's fully tagged. So really it's ripe for text-based analysis like NLP at scale. And we continue to invest in the product. So last year we released events audio, which allows our clients to analyze not just what is said on a call, but how it's said. And we have additional enhancements on our roadmap. So for example, 
improvements in the timeliness of our transcription, which among other things will actually allow us to offer near real-time streaming transcription. Uh, but let's take a look at Apple's Q2 earnings call to illustrate the value of XML transcripts. The call took place on April 28th. Uh, the transcript is tagged with a unique document ID, which you can see highlighted here. And it's also connected with the unique company ID for Apple. And all of the speakers on the call, whether they're company management or analysts, are identified in the metadata and tagged with the unique entity IDs. So for example, Luca Maestri, uh, Apple CFO, is tagged as such. And now when Luca speaks at any point in the call, like this example in the management discussion section, the relevant paragraphs are linked with his entry in the metadata. And with Luca's unique entity ID in hand, what you can do is you can connect to any other information that we have available for him. So for example, we have his biography, employment history, contact information, relationships within and outside of Apple, public investment holdings and more. Now, as mentioned, analysts are also tagged. So for example, Shannon Cross from Cross Research is tagged with her unique entity ID. And similar to uh, with Luca, with Shannon's unique entity ID in hand, you can connect to any other information we have available for her. And a lot of cases, it's gonna be uh, equivalent to what we have for Luca. So um, all that information we showed in one of the previous slides. But in this case, because Shannon is an analyst and is tagged as a specific uh, uh, individual type as an analyst, we also have other information that is relevant to an analyst. So for example, you can connect to her coverage list, uh, other information you can use to connect to research that she's published, estimates that she's issued, other earnings calls that she's participated in, and more. And based on the content of the call itself, you can easily connect to other data in our ecosystem to uncover deeper insights. So for example, our supply chain relationships content exposes business relationship interconnections like customers, suppliers, competitors, and partners. So I hope this has given you uh, something of a sense of the data component of the story. And now I'll pass it back to Riaz. Thank you, thank you, Rico. So, so you know, once we have once we have access to the to these transcript data, we then need to apply. Uh, we want to apply NLP to it to be able to extract these insights at scale. So just to share with you some of the some of the you know. The process and what we what type of questions we want to answer with our NLP system, you know, we wanted to be able to identify and go through these transcripts to identify what are, what are some of the relevant and important passages, uh, specifically related in this case, back to um, ESG and um, and new product launches, and so we also want to be able to then take these passages and and link them back to the companies that are, are being mentioned in there. Um, so in this in this example here, we're looking at Visa and MasterCard as the as the companies. And uh, and then we want to understand the, the sentiment, the polarity around this. Is it is is uh, the company being mentioned? Are they doing something positive for the environment? Are they are they doing a you know a new good uh, a good a new product launch that's benefiting um, the environment? Uh, and so those are that's how sentiment comes in to help uh, analyze that, uh, provide some analysis around that. And then we want to understand what are some of the, you know, what is the relevance of this within the context of the of the document or what's being spoken about. What is the how relevant is this uh, piece of uh, text that's been identified? And then the, the final step is, you know, I need to communicate these views back uh, to my PM. And so um, I need to bring those in, that information somewhere. And then I need to, be in, and in this case, Snowflake. And I may want to blend it with other data I have within Snowflake. It might be internal, internal data that I have or other data from the marketplace. And I want to generate some insights and recommendations uh, quickly. So those are the steps. And you know, let's let's see how this is actually done in practice. So again, I have my analyst hat on, and and with that in mind, I'm going to show you the the sort of workflow I might go I would go through in order to uh, to to work through this process. 
So the first step here is, um, as I mentioned, my, my company has is a FactSet customer and I can go into the Snowflake marketplace and quickly request access to the FactSet uh, events data set. And, and that's the data set that Rico was, uh, was speaking to. So once I, once I request access, that's instantly made available to me within my Snowflake share. And so here I can see, uh, I can see the, you know, the, the raw data that, it, that has been made available to me. And you, you can see the, the sort of structure and the format here. Now this is great. And, and really the, the, key, the key elements here that I, that I really need to try to go through are the section, section messages. And that's where you know, we have the, the discussions and happening and really where I wanna go through to identify some of these uh, ESG and product signals. So this is where the Axon platform comes in. So I'm also a customer of Axon and I can use the Axon platform now to help me extract those insights from my, uh, my trans this transfer data in Snowflake. So let's go through how I would build out that particular use case. So the first step is you're presented with an NLP workflow. And this, is, this allows you to, to build out that, that uh, a natural language processing model to be able to extract insights. And so the first step here is you give your, you give your use case a name. And in this case, it's called the facts set transcripts. And you're presented with this breadcrumb trail of, of uh, four steps. So the first is really the data store. And this is where you want to connect in uh, the content that you want to process through this uh, uh, for this NLP pipeline. If you click on import data, um, you have several different options. One of those options to, to import your data, one, one of those options are to connect in the you know, your data that, you've, that you have available within your Snowflake in, uh, into the action platform. And here, in this case, I have you know, the transcript data and you simply put in um, you know, the warehouse, the database uh, and your private key. And the, the data is now made available as a tile, which you can turn on. And here I can see some snippets of some of the most recent you know, documents that have been, uh, that have been uh, loaded into the Axon platform for analysis. So that's my first step. The other, the other sort of just to highlight, uh, you can also combine other content sets that you may have together with that, with the, with the transcript data. Um, and if, if, you, if you require analysis across multiple different data sets and, and as well. So the next step is to select your taxonomy. And so there's two concepts here. One is a, called an entity, which is any, you think of it as any proper noun. So it could be a person, a location, a company, a region, a municipality that you want to extract some information on. And so within action, our out of box sort of taxonomy consists of over 35,000 um, public companies, uh, both US and international, as well as a number of different uh, other asset classes, uh, crypto, Forex, commodities. In this particular case, you know, as, as the analysts as in, in this particular company I'm working for, we're, we're interested in US-based companies uh, to do this analysis on. And if I, so I can select all the indices that, uh, that, are, that are out of box. And really where we're tracking things are at the individual company level. So within the action platform, we have a 360 view around each of these companies. So for example, with 3M, we're not only looking for the company mentioned or variations on that company mentioned, but we're also looking for leaderships, leadership, products, subsidiaries that may be mentioned around 3M in, the, in these transcripts and event documents and tying that back to, to 3M. So that really helps to increase the precision of, what, of our extractions. The, the next thing that we, once we've selected our entities, the next step is to select uh, our themes. And that's really, what are we trying to extract against you know, those entities? 
And again, out of box, we have several different themes um, that are like you can select from, ranging from you know very specific things around company financials to um, you know credit, more credit related themes around you know, discussions around bankruptcy, legal actions, debt financing, um, macro level themes. But in this case, we're looking for you know the for th things around the environment, um, so ESG related themes as well as product launches. And so if I select the environment category here, uh, you can see there's a number of sub themes that we also try, that, that the system will also try to identify within the, uh, the transcripts. Um, you know, car carbon footprint, discussion around climate change, energy management, greenhouse gas emissions. And around each of these uh, sub themes, there's a full taxonomy and the model has been trained to understand how these certain you know, themes are being discussed. And so that, that provides some of that you know, pre-trained ability to accelerate the, your workflow in terms of building out these models. Um, I've also selected some of the other ESG themes like governance, social, and then for this use case, really what we're looking at is also product development. So what type of, uh, you know, is there, is there new product launches? Is there new intellectual property that's coming out? Uh, so, it, so we're looking at the intersection of these two uh, particular topics. Now, the other, the other aspect of the action platform is if my, you know, if my PM, for example, or, or suppose I have a specific theme that may not be within the out of box set, I can create my own. And here I can simply you know, select theme, I can place it under a specific top level category, maybe it's ESG, um, I put in pollution. And once I start to type in a few seated keywords, what, what happens behind the scenes is that we're, the system is going through a corpus of data and it's making suggestions on variations that you might wanna include as part of the uh, as part of the, uh, the, the taxonomy that you're building up. And so it's using an, a topic modeler behind the scenes and helping to create suggestions, as well as we can create some more complicated sort of uh, setups use, uh, and more advanced setups, I would say using, you know, man, uh, loosing queries and expansion rules. So it really allows you to quickly create these new topics that you may want to identify within the, the content that you're processing, in this case, facts at transcript data. And that, that similarly goes with on the entity side, if you're looking at private companies or you're looking at other maybe public companies that aren't available within our current out of box set or entities, you can build those out very quickly. So now that I've selected my, my entities, which is US companies, my themes, which are the environment, social governance and product launches, I'm now ready to decide what do I want to quantify in that in, in in those extractions so we can do you know the action platform allows you to to select from you know from the, the document level so looking at the entire um the entire transcript and understanding things around the you know elements around that looking at specific entities um so in, in this case the the entities that we're searching for are the companies tying those back you know the important one of, one of the key aspects here is when we find a passage, we tie that back to an open figgy, to a ticker, which then allows you to blend this data, the output with other content you may have that can be tied to a universal identifier. We're also identifying the passages that, were ident that, that are relevant. Um, so a number of different uh, extractions happening. On the theme side, this is where we're extracting what was what was identified. Was it a it was it a, a, a GHG admission discussion, something around carbon footprint? Um, so classifying that the set on the sentiment side. So this is really looking at that passage again and determining the polarity around it, whether it was a positive event and negative event, negative for um, around that theme and entity. If you do have foreign language, so if you, if your documents coming in or if the are in a non-English language, we can the system can handle that, as well as our relevancy calculation, which is saying how important within that 
within that document, you know, what are the most important events and themes that were being discussed. So for this, I've selected all of them. And it takes me to my last sort of uh, step here in the process is where do I want to now deliver the output? And so there are several options made available to you. Uh, in this case, my the, uh, I'm working within Snowflake. So that's where I want to you know, deliver the, the information back into. So, in the, so I can select my, uh, select my, ex, my destination point and I put in the credentials of where I want the, the data to start to, um, you know, the analytics to, to flow into. And I, you know, I, I, turn that, I turn this on, and I can review my use case and deploy it. And within a few minutes, you'll have a pipeline set up that is now has new transcript data comes in to, um, you know, it, into your Snowflake it is immediately processed through this pipeline you set up and delivered back into, into your Snowflake uh, for analysis. Uh, you can also do, so this is, you can do this, and that, that would be a real-time use case where it's continually updating as in a, and then on a historical basis, if you have historical data you want to process, you could set that up as well. Okay, so now I've set up my pipeline. So we'll, we'll, let's just re review the steps where I've, I've, I've got, I've taken data from the marketplace, put into my Snowflake. I've processed this, I've set up a pipeline in action to extract environment and uh, product uh, launch signals from those documents, delivered that back into my Snowflake. And so here is um, a sample of that output of how that would look. And so now we're starting to see the enrichments that are happening and around the identification of certain you know, product launches and, uh, and environment impacts, the snippets of text that had been identified, or, you know, in this case, in the transcripts, the discussion points, what was identified, the hits, you know, what, what the, and then you have other various data around the sections that, that the information was found in. So now that the data is in here, I need to start to build, I can start to build out some analysis on this. I can do this directly within Snowflake um, through writing a few simple SQL queries. I can start to build out um, some dashboards and some views that allow me to drill down and or, or visualize some of the data. And in this case, we've written a, a we've written a simple SQL query that uh, builds out this widget and it highlights the companies that were identified which have mentions of an environment, uh, sort of, uh, you know, a positive environment issue. And that's where the, the, the value here is the sentiment. So it's a pot and our, our sentiment model you know, runs from negative 100 to 100, where so the closer it is to 100, the more positive the model is saying that this company is you know, doing something for the environment. Um, and same with product launch. So really what I'm looking for here are in this case would be where there were discussions in these transcripts around both new product launches and positive environmental impact. And you know, as I go through this heat map, I can quickly identify you know a number of companies which are uh, you know which which are you know both again positively impacting the environment as well as product launches. And I can, I can also understand and drill down a bit deeper to understand where, you know, what type of transcript uh, documents were some of the, where these signals being pulled out of. And so, you know, there, and the, so investor day presentations, there were some, you know, conferences. Um, and I can also understand who was, who was discussing this information, you know, is it coming from a credible source? And, you know, a lot of the discussions, so 30, you know, at least 30 sort of passages or discussions around this were coming from, you know, a, a, a C-level, in this case, the chief executive officer. And then finally, I can start to drill down further into the underlying data to, to support some of my decisions. And I can start to look at the event text, you know, what were the passages that were discovered? Uh, what were some of the hits as well? 
And this type of analysis, so in this case, you know, what I, what I identify here is like Boeing is doing something really well. Uh, you know, Boeing seems to be doing some something within the space of new, around new, around you know, envir the environment, around product, Microsoft as well, and a handful of other companies. I can further drill down and, and sort of support that with the underlying text. And then furthermore, once I've done that analysis, I can quickly share that to another user within our, my PM in this case, uh, the results uh, directly through Snowflake and we can quickly decision on. So, you know, this process end to end, uh, which may have taken me, you know, days to go through and identify all these passages, we can now set up within, you know, uh, Within a few, within an hour, maybe less, right? So with that, and yeah, the other, the last, the last thing I'll point out is, you know, the data in fact in, in Snowflake can also be connected into upstream or upstream sort of business applications and dashboarding, and you can sort of drill down a lot further into the into the information if you in your internal applications if you want. So with that. Um, Let's move back into the, to the presentation and we'll, uh, we'll move into our, you know, our fireside chat and, and uh, section. So I'm gonna stop sharing. I'm gonna go on, uh, go on video here. And uh, uh, Matt, if you can join me as well. Awesome. Great, so, so you know, Matt, one of the one of the questions that I'd I'd like to ask you is, you know, what what are some of the ways that you've seen unstructured and data and being used within the financial services? And are, are there any sort of key key insights or takeaways you have that you can share? And with one, you? yeah, no, and one, I think the, the the one key insight, and I think you you demonstrated it, is this, you know, for the first time we have this connectivity between third-party data you know technology providers like axern as well as internal first-party data um like never before like what you just showed and, and i think you were being you know you were sandbagging a bit i think it can take you know minutes to get that whole thing you know up and running um in you know in a user's environment without having to do anything as creating new pipelines and getting new tech approval, tech security approvals. Like this is an unprecedented time, right? And the fact of being able to have a no code environment like that, I think that like that's the, I think the big wave um, and seeing this all come together, um, it, you know, is, you know, this, this big trend of now you know, leveling up and having, you know, AI um, at your fingertips given you have all this data now accessible to you and not having to think about pipelines, right? I mean, in that example you showed, right? You know, you connected Axern directly to a live fact set feed that's pointing to the live data that's being provided, you know, by fact set, you know, to this joint customer without this data moving, right? Um, so now you can really level up. I mean, this is taking no code to a whole other level, right? It's not only no code for the AI, but it's no code for the data wrangling, data prep, and everything else that tends to bog down, you know, most of these processes that no one wants to talk about. It's like the unspoken, you know, truth, which is most most AI ML projects that I hear about within financial services, it's like 80% of the time is spent just moving data and getting into a form mm -hmm. that's ready to process. Uh, so I think that's, you know, really the kind of common, you know, the, the, the opportunity we have now is now you can really bring this higher order, you know, beta of capability to this wider audience because we're all connecting on this data cloud network right. um, that's now accessible to anyone, you know, who's, you know, who, who's trying to solve these problems from a business you know, perspective. Yeah, no, and that's that's a great point. I mean, the the what we've seen with 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 this no code workflow, um, with this you know with the integration with Snowflake, is is really that yeah with it, we're bringing these capabilities really further to the business to to be able to 
to you know to really innovate and, and get insights and in, and in, on their data much quicker, right? And the fact that they can bring it, they can also. I mean, I did we didn't show it within the demo, but I think there is additional power there in bringing it back into Snowflake, also quickly combining it with other site types of data sets. Imagine you know overlaying supply chain on top of your. So you've taken your unstructured data, you've created some structure out of it. I now know my ESG, let's say, insights, overlaying that on my supply chain, uh, which may be another, you know, content set from fact set or, or you have internally, and then being able to display that. I mean, that that would be, that's really powerful and very difficult to, uh, you know, to public to do maybe even two, two, three years ago, right? I mean, now you can do it. With no, no, we're in, a, we're in a new era. And I think to your point of that this can all be orchestrated by a business user. Right, I think that is the, I mean, I think it, it, it's, it's kind of worth, you know, really digesting, right? Everything you showed, right? I mean, th th you know, cause I, I think a lot of time, no code and low code, I think is ban you know, uh, is bandied around as something, but it's really not being completely truthful because of all the setup that has to be done, you know, to kind of make that environment, you know, no code, like this is literally, a business user, you know, who all they need to bring is, is SQL to the table, right? They're now running a full, you know, unstructured, semi-structured, you know, AI ML pipeline into their, into and out of their environment, literally by not having to, you know, do anything other than a few clicks um, and, you know, some SQL. So again, I think this is, you know, we're in unprecedented territory um, in a good way. Right. Yeah. And, you know, are there, are there other sort of um, use cases and applications that you've seen around customers of Snowflake using, you know, semi-structured, unstructured data within, within the financial services space? Um, is there anything you can share there? Yeah, no, I think there's a lot of interesting, you know, capabilities. You know, one of the things we introduced semi-structured data types um, early on in the product. Um, and now we recently introduced even unstructured um, data types in the product. And I think we've done so in some ways, you know, not even realizing, you know, what it, what it has been opening. And I think facts of data was an example of semi-structured data, but even full on, you know, documents and, um, and, and even some cases when you have handwritten um, documents, I think there's just, you know, so many documents um, that are, are at our disposal when that, that's claims data for insurance um, or, um, you know, other kinds of um, legal documents and, you know, is the forms and it, it, there's this huge corpus uh, of, of documents that are starting to be um, mined um, for, you know, for data. Um, you know, in addition to some of, you know, data that's for the likes of facts that, that are kind of pre-preparing and, and doing some of that, you know, kind of element extraction. Um, but I think there's more and more demand to say like, let's get the actual forms that were filled out, even if they were, you know, even if some, some of them were even filled out by hand, right? And, you know, we, sh we should, you know, as much as we can be making decisions, you know, on all the data we have at our fingertips, right? Um, sometimes you, you just don't have access to the data, you know, that, that, that there are limits, right? But if you have, if you're an organization, you have access to the data and you have, you, you, now you have AI that can actually extract, you know, not only the content, but semantics out of this, um, you should be using all that data to make decisions. Um, you know, again, within yeah. your cost constraint, but you should no longer say like, I don't know, let's just, you know, we don't know, you know, let's just kind of use this, our own instincts, right? Or I think, and I'm sure you've seen this, like, you know, you know, it, it, there's a lot that AI is finding that doesn't, um, doesn't gel with what your intuitions would say. Like in one of your examples, right. Yeah. You'd expect, you know, a lot of the kind of earnings calls that, you know, that Tesla would be, you know, be mentioned, you know, would, would be highlighting their environmental impact. We, we intuit that, but, you know, it's, it's, you know, it looks like that's not being spoken about, you know, at least at you know those kinds of earnings calls, right? That, that's an interesting you know insight, right? That I think our, our you know our own brains may not 
kind of pick up on because we're going to make kind of assumptions. And I think, you know, being able to say like there's things that are actually happening versus things that are, you know, we're, we're intuiting um, is, you know, again, we should be using that data, um, you know, as much more, you know, than we are. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all, you know, it's also, I think, you know, using AI to help also draws to maybe more, yeah, things that you may not, yeah, as you said, are not intuitive. You may not otherwise catch or, or, or look at first, right? Um, and uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great way to drill. And, and, you know, from a financial services organization standpoint, is there anything, you know, you've seen your, cus your customers, Snowflake customers think about in terms of how they approach, you know, um, you know, the data and what, what type of, what, what, what's kind of, what, what are some of the concerns there? Um, yeah, no, I think, and, and you hit on it or you touched on it a little bit where I think the opportunity really is not only to look at third-party data um, and look for, for content signals there, um, but it's really to look at, you know, um, semantic that's, you know, that's also in, in, in companies first party data sets, uh, or that blended data set where I say, I have, you know, this data about earnings, but I also have, you know, some internal, you know, knowledge about those companies that my own analysts, um, are, are, are writing, or, you know, I have some, you know, if it's, if it's, maybe it's my company and I have, you know, details about my own supply chain that I want to be able to kind of you know, extract insights on and understand what they what, what what the elements of the supply chain are telling me, right? So that combination of first and third party data, I think, pre presents a really interesting, um, you know, uh, uh, both opportunity and challenge. Where you know, organizations, financials in particular, are going to be less likely to want to have that data, you know, leave their environment. That's mm -hmm. first party, um, right. even if it's for valuable insights. Um, because, you know, there, there is a sensitivity there. And I think, you know, one of the interesting, you know, places that we find ourselves in is that, you know, the Snowflake platform is being used across the industry and, and other industries, but across the industry to store um, first party data mm -hmm. and make this third party data available. And I think, you know, that, um, you know, that blending and finding ways to be able to keep data where it is Third party at the third party providers, first party in, in the organization themselves, but still connect to you know, a, a platform and technology providers like Axern, I think is a really interesting you know, opportunity. And I think the, the more we can find ways to, to use the, the rails that we have and keep data and keep the data in place, um, but move this capability to where the data is riding on this secure governed network. Um, I think is in incredibly interesting uh, opportunities. Um, and, you know, in, in the not too distant future, the ability to have, you know, you know to have you know, platforms like Action be able to push, you know, some of that code uh, or some of that, that, that pipeline that you demonstrated into the customer's own environment mm -hmm. to be where their data is. Right. And saying that, you know, you'll be, because again, all, you know, Axern is, is deploying code to do this, right? It's not like anyone Axern is. So the fact that that code is running in the Axern environment versus running in a customer environment, right? You know, it, it just now it presents a really good opportunity to have that data stay secure, stay governed. And without having that data have to leave, have that now you can, you know, you'll be able to extract that semantic. So I'm sure Axern is going to be, you know, early adopting uh, that capability and look forward to that, you know, that really interesting opportunity. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, data security, governance, huge, huge aspect of what we also see with our customers. Um, and uh, yeah, we, we look forward to continuing to build the partnership with, uh, with Snowflake. So, awesome. so Matt, yeah, I'd like to thank you for, for your time um, and Rico as well for your time as well. Um, and I, I think at this point, uh, you know, Grace, and we'll open it up to uh, to Q and A. Yep. Thanks, Rios. Um, we have a few questions um, here, and so if you have any questions, just please keep popping them in the Q and A box, and we'll get to them. The first one is from HP. How would you determine, prove, or defend the accuracy of your results in the use case that you showed? 
So in terms of um, the accuracy of the of the models, uh, we have we have white papers that uh, that we've published to um, to go through the precision and recall of the models. So that um, happy to happy to share that with anyone who's uh, who's interested. Um, and so you know that 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 I think that would be the you know the the way we we would defend it through is is through the back testing through the white papers that we've we've published. Um, the other the other sort of aspect of the action platform, which I which we didn't quite share in the in the presentation, is that we also allow our customers to um, calibrate and 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 build their own models as well. So you can use what's out of box. Which again has been sort of back tested, but if if there is, you know, in some cases maybe the way the model is um, is computing sentiment might not be the same way that you view um, the sentiment of a certain type of topic or, or sentence, and that's what that gives you the opportunity in the action platform in a no code way again to be able to feed it in snippets of text, uh, recalibrate the uh, sentiment um, through a uh, through a UI. And really, kind of personalize that again to your to to how you view things. Um, so hopefully that yeah that answers the question. Okay, perfect. And then um, the next question from Simon is: Can they ha can the product handle non English languages such as Chinese? Uh, yes. Yeah, we can. So we have a we have capabilities to handle. I think it's like around uh, forty or so languages. So we can any any type of non English content, uh, we can, or not any type, but mo most non-English content we can bring in, we can uh, process it through our NLP engine, and we can return that back either in, in the local language or in, in English. All right, and then the next question from Harshal is, does Axern provide APIs to integrate its core NLP infrastructure into custom solutions, or is it the complete product that needs to be purchased or subscribed to? Right. Yeah. So, so good question. Right. Right now, the 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 API sits on the output. So, if you if you want to consume the output of your NL of the NLP pipeline or the you know predictive modeling pipeline that you've built, you can uh, you can access that through an API. Um, there are the the steps in between there. Uh, right now, we haven't publicly released the, the APIs for those for those individual components. All right, and then we have um, an anonymous question: How do you deal with people greenwashing their public statements? Does Extern deal with that somehow? Yeah, I mean, green, greenwashing is definitely. Uh, definitely be an issue within within the the market um so the way the way we 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 typically will will deal with that is we'll we'll look at we'll look at some of the you know where where some of the peer peer groups you know somehow some of the peers within that category are talking about what they're doing around that certain topic and if there's de if there's large deviations from that, it can lead to deeper analysis of that particular company making statements, uh, which which may indicate a greenwash. So it's a bit of post analysis in the way that we we handle it, but or, or that it's being handled. But it, it it can lead to some insights when you look at it. You know, if you if a certain company within a, a sector is making some some statements, um, and it's inconsistent maybe with other other uh, the broader sort of peer group, it may lead you down a path to to do further investigation into that, and that's where some of the transparency into the underlying data that we provide can help to um, highlight some of the, that greenwashing that might maybe happen. Okay, great. And then, could Axern differentiate between a legitimate positive hit from someone installing LEDs in their facility, for example, versus like a potential false positive? from a company who, as their business, installs LEDs in other companies' facilities? Uh, sorry, is, L, is LED, uh, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not. LED, it seems like um, an example would be IBM installing solar panels equals good versus Solar City, who, as a business, is installing solar panels equals the normal course of business. 
So can we can we detect if a company is installing versus whether it's a, a part whether it's like sort of part of their their business? Yeah, and that that would be that that would be. I mean, that that's pretty. That's a nuance. Yeah, that's pretty nuanced. But I think that the way that would be picked up would be through the the uh, the system looking at the context of the statement that's being being used. And we can, you can again, some of this can be done through tying back. You know what the company what the company's business is. If I understand the the question, if what the company's business core business is in industry versus some sort of net new um, product that they might be might be launching out like if I, IBM's net you know its core is not to do solar solar energy um, so if it's uh, so tying some of the again blending some of the data and in, in the po in, in the post analysis can lead to some of these insights all right and then the next question is does Xern develop its NLP algorithms from scratch if yes how do you keep up updating them with the latest in the market Right, so we, we do, our, our NLP um, algorithms are created from scratch. We, we don't use sort of third party uh, NLP systems. And what, 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 how, we, how we maintain them is we, ha we, have a, we have a team of analysts and we, we maintain that, we maintain the models, the taxonomies on a regular basis. So that's, you know, train them, back test them. And that's just part of the, the way that we, we maintain our models. All right, and we have one last question because I know we're um, up on time. So having the connectivity within Snowflake is great, but how does the data get there in the first place? So the, the data gets, well, yeah, it comes in from Snowflake. Uh, well, 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 let me take a step because I think they're saying like, how does it get into the source, right? So in the case of, you know, a fact set or otherwise, right? I think you know data still has to make that first hop, right? So, right, if that data is gathered in the fact set example, right, is going to be in internal fact set, you know, systems, you know, that they gather whatever that earnings data, as Rico showed, right? There is that lift, right, and that can be done with, you know, you name it from whatever ETL ELT tools you have. Um, the, the important piece to take away from this is that is done ideally once. Right. Um, so again, fact set does their processing, figures out how to get the recordings, puts that earnings data up into the data cloud once. At that point, it is now available for all of fact sets customers and partners to use in in that one um, in, in that in that one instantiation. Right. So yes, you know the data has, still has to make that jump into the cloud once, um, but it's now done once. Available, you know, cross clouds, cross regions, cross everything, um, and I think at that point now all this becomes available uh, because now, you know, uh, our capabilities like Axerin can now tap into that without having to re-ingest it again into the client environment and then re-ingesting again into the Axerin environment. Right? It's only done. It basically makes that jump globally once. Great, thanks so much for taking care of that, Matt. Um, awesome. All right, well, it looks like we're up on time. So thank you all again for joining our webinar and we will send you a recording of it um, within the next few days. Thanks. Thank you, everyone. Thank you.